Hi, I'm Steve Croce, the product manager for the PowerEdge C6220, which is our upcoming replacement to the PowerEdge C6100. And what I'm here to talk to you today about is the, the advantages and the changes and improvements we've made on the C6220 compared to the C6100. So what's in front of me right now are two models of our C6220. Um, you can see the front ends look very similar to our C6100. You've got a 12 drive model and a, and a 24 drive model. Uh, from the back, you can see that one of these is a four node and one of these is a two node. I'll walk you through those differences uh, in a minute. But let's start with just the chassis infrastructure itself. So externally, it's going to look a lot like a C6100. You're not going to see it and say automatically that's a C6220. But where we really made, made our changes and, 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 and improved the system is in the internals themselves. So I'll start with the power efficiency improvements. We had great power efficiency in the C6100. We're going to take it even further with this system. And it starts with the power supplies. Um, launching with 80 plus platinum power supplies, we'll have a 1200 vari a watt variant and a 1400 watt variant. So we get another couple percentage points of efficiency just from the power supplies alone, which will help overall. So that's the first piece of it, is the power supplies. The second piece of it is the power distribution itself. So on the power distribution board, we've merged boards, we've di used different power distribution techniques, and we've used some uh, bus bars in the mid plane to enable us to minimize the loss of power in transmission from the power supplies to the, to the motherboards themselves. Anytime you move power around, there are losses. We've attempted to minimize that, and we've done a pretty good job in this generation. The third piece, and one of the larger pieces of our power savings, is in the fans themselves. The fans are now um, a, a slightly different size, a slightly different uh, efficiency fan, um, and they're also, via their fan control board, tuned to a slightly different fan control algorithm. A lot of power is saved in just the fans themselves, uh, and they've been tweaked and tuned to exactly the impedance and the characteristics of the chassis itself. Altogether, the power efficiency savings compared to our C6100 chassis have netted us about 100 watts of savings when running at, at full load. So ultimately, we're really trying to drive home that performance per watt story, and we're doing that with the denominator, the wattage, uh, as much as we are with the performance in this generation. So that's the improvements to the chassis uh, efficiency itself. Beyond that, it's just a more serviceable chassis. It's an easier chassis to work with. Uh, some of the things we've done in here are merged boards in the power distribution area. So fewer boards means fewer connecting cables. Uh, we've moved the boards up so that it's easier to access those cables. A lot easier to get to the components in the power distribution area. In our uh, hard drive ch uh, cage, it used to be 12 screws, a lot of work to get that cage out. This generation, four screws, it slides straight out. So much easier to access uh, the components in the back plane. The fans themselves, rather than having to snake a cable through to the fan control board uh, like previous designs, they pop right out with these little quick disconnects. So a lot easier to uh, get to the fans and replace them in this system. So overall, just a cleaner, uh, more refined design. Uh, a quick you know, point of data on that is our services team always does an assessment on new, on new platforms. They completely tear them down and they build them back up uh, to you know, kind of uh, get some data for their field team to know how long it's going to take to do a repair in the field. This system has cut roughly an hour off of that tear down and rebuild time. So it's going to be apparent in working with repairing or uh, modifying the chassis that it's just easier to build, easier to repair, easier to maintain. Um, and the final thing on the chassis itself, the infrastructure itself, is uh, a new feature we're adding on the 24 drive system right here, because we're going to have an expander backplane option. And what that expander is going to allow you to do is do uh, a custom split of hard drives between the different nodes. So if you look at what we did in the 6100, if you had four nodes, your drives in the front were always divided by four. Uh, if you had two nodes, the drives in the front were always divided by two. Well, this custom backplane will allow you to take those hard drives, and whether you have a four node or two node system, split up those drives any way you'd like. So if you wanted two nodes that were storage heavy, you could allocate more of the drives to those two nodes, and if you wanted two nodes that were light, uh, disk-wise and more of a compute node, you could allocate fewer disks to those nodes. So it's all about being able to be flexible about how the drives are allocated. 
Another area of flexibility in the chassis itself is now you can pick different configurations between the nodes within the system. Um, once again, referring to the previous generation, it had to be four or two of the exact same server in your chassis, along with the equal split of hard drives. Well, now you'll be able to configure each server individually so that you can do things like a couple of compute nodes, a memcache node, and a storage node or something, all in one box. So you'll be able to pick processors, memory, and cards and connectivity per node rather than per chassis. So a lot more flexibility on the chassis side, just a lot more refinement, easier to service, easier to manage, easier to deploy on the chassis side. So that's the infrastructure itself, but the main headline in this generation is Intel's new E5-2600 processors, which is what this system will support. Uh, the E5-2600, Intel's highest performance two socket, uh, and it really goes along with the tenets of the product as being a high, extremely dense, extremely high performance, uh, high performance per watt platform. So what you get with the E5 2600 processor is a couple more cores, a huge leap in performance, but also via some changes we've made in the board, you can support up to 135 watt processors now. In the C6100, we were capped at 95. This generation, we can hit uh, pretty much as high as Intel will go with the E5 2600, and that's 135 watts. And what we're seeing is, in addition to the generational leap in performance you get from going uh, from the Westmere uh, 5600 series that Intel had in the previous generation to the E5 2600, you also get an additional 20% performance in being able to go from a 95 watt processor up to a 135 watt processor. So all performance, performance, performance on the, on the processor side. But in addition, it comes down to the memory as well. So uh, a differentiator between the 6100 and the 6220 is that both the number, the number of memory slots and the speed of the memory slots. So first of all, we've gone up to 16 memory slots compared to 12 on the C6100. By having more memory slots, it's number one, higher performance, because with Intel's uh, E5-2600 processors, you get four memory channels per processor. So it, rather than loading memory in threes and sixes, like you did on the 6100, you'll load memory in fours and eights uh, in this generation. So that gives you a little bit better bandwidth, a little bit better, better bandwidth per core. That's the first piece. The second piece of it is the memory got faster in this generation. So if you're using a eight core processor, you can get 1600 megahertz memory in here. Once again, improving your uh, bandwidth per processor. And then finally, just by having more slots, you get to uh, get higher capacity. So you can fill in more of those DIMMs, you can get higher capacity. With 16 gigabyte DIMMs, you'll be able to go up to 256 uh, gigabytes per, per uh, server. Once we add some additional DIMMs and uh, via uh, load-reduced DIMM technology, you'll be able to go up to 512 gigabytes per node. So the amount of memory is just increasing per node. It allows you to do more. So besides the processor and memory changes themselves, there's a couple other things we've done on the board um, outside of just the Intel architecture. The first of which is routing uh, the hard drive cabling through the motherboard itself. Uh, some feedback we got uh, on the C6100 is that we used to route you know, a cable directly from the back where the onboard controller is right to the front where it connects to the midplane and it just didn't uh, make sense to a lot of customers that why would we route a cable from back to front when we've got the board right there. We completely agree. We've routed the cabling through the motherboard itself so now if you're using the onboard integrated SATA controller this is what your complete sled will look like. You will not have a cable running from back to front cleaner design, easier to service, there's a lot of advantages of that. So, and even if you are using an a, a non-integrated controller via the PCI Express slot or the mezzanine slot, you'll have a shorter cable run just to these connectors here. So, uh, lowering cable lengths, making it a little bit cleaner up front, and uh, thermally a better solution. So, that's the changes we've made to the hard drive routing. Um, in addition, uh, your onboard network connectivity will stay largely similar to the C6100. However, we're adding Intel's newest i350 uh, gigabit uh, controller, which is a little bit lower power, a little bit better performance than the 82576 that we used in the previous generation. So it's just going along as well with our previous story of you know, completely pulling as much power as we can out of the system so that your performance per watt story is as, as positive as it can. So one gigabit down as well. 
Uh, and then in addition, we've got the same number of slots, at least in a one-use sled, than we did before. You've got a BI-8 PCI Express mezzanine, so just like the previous generation, you've got your custom cards that you can put in there, um, 10 gig Ethernet, uh, InfiniBand, uh, SAS HBAs, and then we've also got a BI-16 PCI Express slot. However, the difference is that it's now all PCI Express Gen 3. So um, the ecosystem is still being built out in the industry of Gen 3 supporting devices, but when that ecosystem builds up, we'll be there to support it. So by 16 and a by 8 in our one new sled at Gen 3 speeds. Um, another small addition in this generation is the addition of a micro SD card on the riser, uh, just to support a little bit better embedded, embedded hypervisors for some, some um, virtualized workloads. So that's our standard base sled. But one of the other large additions that we've made in this generation is the capability of doing uh, a four node and a two node system, but on the two node system, increasing the I.O. and, and doing a double high uh, sled for that. So what you see on the left is our four node system, um, and what you see on the right is our two node system. And as you can see, it's twice the height, which gives you double the amount of standard PCI Express slots. You still have your BI-8 mezzanine, but you've got double the amount of PCI Express slots, and as you can see from the two HIT connections right here, uh, we responded to one of the you know, uh, requests we got on the 6100 is more bandwidth to the C410X. Well now with a double high riser you can get two HIX slots out of, the, uh, the, out of each server to give you more bandwidth to the C410X. So besides that, um, there's a couple other things we've added on this 2U slip. The first piece is the uh, hard drive bandwidth itself. By um, it, you know, making it a double high sled, we can effectively double the amount of bandwidth we get to the hard drives because we're using both the bottom and top mid plane. So that's a big ad advantage. The second advantage is in our is our PCI Express cage. Um, rather than being limited to low profile half length cards, this cage will actually be able to fit a full height, full length card. So you have more options when it comes to your PCI Express expandability. Um, so. Once again, a little bit more flexibility for the systems, a uh, some opportunities to do some different things with your system. Um, as a 1U replacement, you can get two nodes in here at roughly the same uh, density as a 1U, but get the shared infrastructure advantages and get more storage than you could ever fit in a 1U via either 6 or 12 disks per node. So, Overall, on the chassis, uh, if you look at the improvements, it was really just about refining, responding to what our customers have asked for, and adding a couple new features along the way to just make it a easier to service, easier to manage, and more capable system.